So here's a walkthrough of the solenoid control valve automation testing. And the point is that this valve makes the cylinder move between three magnet locations. These are just shown. That's a magnet. That's a magnet. That's a magnet. This is the sensor. The sensor is connected to the controller. And this is the Detroit Fab Lab solenoid driver board on top of the breakout shield and then below that is the Arduino. So the points here, let's talk about the connections. First, as far as how do you know the magnet orientation, these magnets do have an orientation so that the sensor could differentiate between plus and minus where the outer ones are plus, the middle one is minus, and the other outer one is also plus. You test these by using the the guided user graphical user interface namely this program here uh, where this is called the CEB electronics test application and when you hit on sensor you test the sensor and the light the LED here's our LEDs here they will light up if the if the sensor reads positive so those are the LEDs described they're in channel they're going through channel 12 and 13 on this this example here. So next step, uh, we need to notice what kind of connections we have. This whole explanation yields an understanding of the control code, which is the OSC CB test one dot PDE. Um, look at that from Open Pario. So first we've got five channels on the solenoid driver. One, two, three, four, five from the bottom to the top. And for the the particular connection that we're talking about here, for the soil drawer, soil drawer cylinder, is the solenoid number two. There's three solenoids from left to right. One, two, three, left being the main cylinder. This is the one that's wired up right now for the, se the secondary soil loading drawer cylinder and this one will be for the shaker motor which is taken off right now for testing so we've got the the driver pins on the on the solenoid board corresponding to particular channels and the Arduino and the motion is left and right for the, the secondary cylinder and we also need to notice what the the convention is for the ports on the solenoid valve. So if you've got the cylinder here, the, sorry, the solenoid valve, uh, the particular connection for driving the cylinder back and forth will be port A and port B. Uh, this is port B closer to the solenoid valve. And port A is the one farther. But basically it turns out that port B goes to the bottom of the cylinder and port A, and the way the code is set up right now, goes to the top of the cylinder you see up, up here. And that allows us to, to run the test code for the secondary cylinder with success based on the correct orientation of the magnets which are set by the GUI that I've shown before. So. Uh, the only notice about the the solenoid solenoids here is that these two valves are cylinder type of valves which lock upon fluid being cut off. This one is freewheeling since it's a spinning hydraulic motor that does the shaker. You want it to freewheel in order to prevent shocks from happening. Solenoids are bidirectional, meaning that they have forward and reverse direction on the the last solenoid we only need to spin the motor hydraulic motor for the shaker only in one direction so if it's bidirectional then that means that there are two connections for each solenoid basically the top I'll point to this one the top top wires and the bottom set of wires the corners here and there are unused but this one here these ones on the left hand side are the power leads and you see there they're actually all wired together because the connections are disconnected on a negative side. So uh, here the top the top connection is the brown wire uh, that happens to be channel 2 and the yellow wire 
which happens to be channel 3 on the driver board. So top and bottom electrical connections corresponding to ports A and B and the convention there being um, let's see this I'm reading from the the wiki the electrical connections on a sawmill are such that such that the common connection is removed from between the two pins on the bottom right uh, when this valve arrived there was a connection between these two pins uh, this one and that one now that's not used in our case for whatever reasons I particularly don't understand but I mean they don't want to be connected because they're controlled individually so I disconnected that and that works now the upper electrical connection happens to open up port let's see port B and the bottom electrical connection opens up port A the ports are labeled on top of the aluminum body as I mentioned as I showed and one can actually test which is which by activating either port and blowing through the valve to determine which port is open. So on the sensors, the main cylinder sensor is analog channel 0 or digital 14 on Arduino. The secondary cylinder is on channel analog 1 or digital 15. So I see show the video of this operating, but for now I'll just quit at... Um, the fact that this table here just look at the table and you have the driver pins solenoid connection uh, where like for example top connection of solenoid 2 bottom connection of solenoid 2 that tells the Arduino channels which are found within the code so you can actually understand the code the motion corresponding is left and right upon activation and the solenoid port wiring is that port B goes to the bottom of drawer cylinder port a, a goes to the top of drawer cylinder now does that check out does port B go to the bottom of drawer cylinder yeah we've seen that this is port B here this one here uh, port B goes to the bottom of the cylinder port A goes to the top so that's the wiring convention convention for the secondary cylinder explained so you can understand how to wire this in case anything goes wrong so we have our CB press here. It's also worth noting what happens upon startup. So what you do is we've got the hydraulic hoses going to the solenoid. These are the in and outlets. This is the the power port, the inlet. Um, but basically, let's see what happens when you turn on the tractor as the hydraulic power source. So we go to our prototype one of Live Track, the old version which is a busted turbo pump which we're not fixing because it costs too much but turn that thing up Six seconds, then it goes from the, from the right to the left, stopping at each, and then all the way to the other side. And you see how it moves between the magnet positions. This should be tied by a power plant. 